know, you could, whoops, let me do that a little better. That reads somewhere like this. So we've got to keep in mind your form definition. So this is cylinder, so you're going to have a core, all right, somewhere over here, you're going to have another one over here, and then you have your highlights because this surface is facing up, this surface is facing up, so therefore you get this shape uh, definition. Now it's quite rough. Again, these are done live in the class, so generally I can't spend more than an hour on these, otherwise I get nothing done. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of small mistakes here and there, like the store is not exactly in perfect perspective, but you know, overall it does sort of work. Okay, And then I start indicating some uh, uh, glass, right? This got a driver in here, so I want to make sure we could indicate a little bit of that. Uh, and then with that, we cover it back up because this will pick up reflections and uh, the far side of this glass will start actually reflecting the environment quite a bit. All this stuff will go into here. So you cannot see through the glass at this point here. Okay, So this is just details of this vehicle. Right, there's some interior painting here. And then this is a quick texture I made for the taxi. I want to turn this into a taxi stand. So I just went to Photoshop, just selected and made a little black box and copy and pasted a bunch of them um, and then you could then stretch this out you can see here there's one on the ground right using the skew command so I'll just do one real quick to show you this is really easy to do so I just make a copy of this for example if you want to put it on this wall just rotate this guy here and then just skew it into place like so following your uh, perspective obviously so I want this to go into my perspective on this wall I could do something like this right and it'll fit in so this is a great way to do graphics uh, to do all sorts of uh, tight patterns very, very easy to do see so, and then just drop this down a little bit and we have a pattern now on this wall so that's how um, this was done here on the floor as well as on the taxi itself Let's see now I'm using CS, um, what version am I using? The one I'm doing this demo on is actually CS1. Uh, it's quite old version, but if you're using CS, Photoshop CS4 or 5, uh, the 5 just came out recently, uh, it has actually skew onto a curve, which is very, very useful. In this case, I don't have that function. So this these um, patterns are actually skewing on a straight uh, surface. Oops, let me uh, show you what I mean. See right here? Now the new Photoshop, you can actually make it skew onto a nice, soft curve like this so these lines are not straight but these are very minor I mean things like this um, I mean, we we use Photoshop since version 4 you know or version 2 um, so you just kind of have to make do with what you have and uh, don't let the tool uh, run your painting because in the old school days when we have this kind of situation you can actually just go in there and actually erase out the straight line and curve it um, manually like what I'm doing right now you see so you can always do things like this to kind of fix things up a bit so all right. Don't ever let the tool run your painting, right? because if you lack something, just do it by hand. You know, don't you know? We rarely d depend on filters and these kind of things to do work, uh, because you don't want to be limited by that. Okay. So, anyways, here's the uh, vehicle. Some minor details on it. Uh, pick up some highlights here and there to start defining this guy. See, this guy right now is starting to become more refined, just in the matter of a uh, few layers. You see, going from literally this to that uh, very quickly. Let me just dump this layer for now so we don't need it. Okay. Again, from super messy to something that's more refined uh, within a few uh, layers. So all right, let me pause Photoshop real quick so we can save this and continue. Be right back. Okay, and we are back. So let's continue this forward. Uh, so where are we at? We're at adding some details here and there. Yeah, let's clean up. And now we're starting to do some value separation. Uh, which is the problem we saw earlier in this painting. See all these darks in here, uh, too much contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, 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 value metric fog right here. What it does is it actually decreases the value. You see here, on, off, on, off. And it pops the stuff that's uh, closer to us into the front, like this taxi that's in, right in the camera here. Boom, now that comes to the front. These railings come to the front. And it gives this painting a sense of priority and it gives the viewer a focal point. So now we know that our eyes supposed to go here and it's supposed to go here. That's it. Boom, boom, boom. The stuff in the background, you're going to read it probably somewhere about one, maybe two, maybe three. Somewhere in that water where some people might look at one, two, three, something like that, right? We don't want this stuff to be priority. The priority should be here. Just uh, same thing if you're watching a film and this is the shot. You don't want the audience to first look here. They want the 
lines look here, right? If this thing's coming in this way, this thing's gonna open, someone's gonna walk out, the eye should stay here. So all this stuff back here serves more as storytelling purpose to tell the audience where am I, what time of day it is, and what kind of details around the city. That's what its purpose is. But the story and the design takes place here and takes place here. Okay. And that's what this uh, big fog thing did. Boom. And here I added some architectural details on off, you can see, because the student uh, has some Art Nouveau type of things as far as I can tell in here. Uh, you can see he had, this is the original piece here, some of the railings that you see here. It's got some kind of nice patterns. I, I like this. I like mixing a lot of historical uh, uh, architectural elements into high-tech futuristic things, which you see a lot in a lot of sci-fi films. You know, Blade Runner for one did that. Um, you know, just the tons of movies go down that road because it's kind of cool. Uh, when you're designing, right, this is getting more into design talk here. You don't want to do something that's so different that the general audience actually don't understand what the heck you're trying to do. Uh, but then you don't want to do something that's so traditional that everyone's going, oh, I've seen that before. So one of those quick things you could do is you could mix two things together. For example, let's mix uh, you know, Art Nouveau with architect, uh, with high tech, where you could go. Let's mix the, uh, what could we mix? 1920s New York architecture with vehicles. Right? Those are kind of some general things you could try as a designer. And it gives you something quite interesting. And if you know how to mix the proportions and the shapes right or correctly in a, in a good combination, you could end up with some very neat designs. So that's something we, we do here in the school as well to teach students how, how to think like that. So you're not cloning or you're not copying. Okay, and that comes with research, and I'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, so here's the layer on. Okay, I added also some lighting, for example, here in the vehicle here. Um, so how do we get these shapes? How do you get this? You know, we don't quite to draw this randomly because as a designer, you have to be aware of why certain things are the way they are. Well, why? What is Art Nouveau? What does that do? So I'll show you guys quickly uh, my research folder here. You can see this is all my Art Nouveau research that I have in my just thousands and thousands of. Uh, research photos. So if I open some of these up, you can see uh, some very good examples of Art Nouveau. Right? Which you, if you ever go to Paris, uh, you see a lot of this stuff. For example, this is from Paris. Uh, you can see these um, designs. And Art Nouveau is generally is very organic things, like taking bones or plant life and putting that uh, those shapes into architecture. Uh, that's you know the, the basic gist of what uh, Art Nouveau is. So here's some beautiful stuff. Uh, make sure there's Art Nouveau. See some beautiful patterns in some of these. Here's our Art Nouveau furniture. You can obviously see the plant roots um, and leaves that make up these shapes. And this is where you get the design elements from. As a designer, we depend heavily on understanding and research uh, because this is the kind of stuff you want to get correct. This is the stuff that when the audience sees it, they buy it. Buy it not in the sense of money, but they buy it as they believe in your design. They think that this is real. It's because you're incorporating stuff that are real into your designs that they're, the people is uh, used to seeing. Right, when you make something too different in a design, like, hey, I can make this reading, uh, I can build this entire building out of bubble gum. Yes, it's different, right? And I can say no one has done it. This entire giant building is made out of bubble gum after people spit it out and we made a huge building. But guess what? A lot of people are not going to buy that for a real building in the future. Who's going to do that, right? It's different, sure. You, you could check that off. It's different. But is it sellable to the general audience? Probably not, right? But you start mixing, it's futuristic. Yeah, I like that. And I'm putting Art Nouveau into a futuristic building. Is that sellable? Probably is, because when someone sees it, they have a sense of belief, uh, realism in it. Okay, so I don't want to get too carried far away into design here. This is more of a painting. I uh, would we'll cover that in a different tutorial. But anyway, it's just a quick mention of that. Uh, here I'm decreasing some of the value around the image. I want to darken some of the corners up. You can see all the corners got darkened. This corner, this corner, this corner. And this is to prevent bleeding of the uh, light to take the viewer's eye off the image. Okay, Because you want the viewer to stay in here. When you have light or values are bright in the corners, sometimes it, their eye tend to wander off the page. Like They, they go here and they, whoop, they wander off. You know, So you want to kind of control that a little bit. Here I'm adding some indicated lighting for this hallway. Let me zoom in here. Boom. So turn those lights on. Some of those will hit the ground. It's just a very quick thing to give it some perspective push. So we have this kind of feeling. And so actually, you can see a person behind there. 